thumbnail sketch is small, but uh, your final design has to be uh, as big as, so I want you to make this one bigger, but uh, you have to retain the original proportion of your design, your core design. So making a grid makes it easy for you to draw bigger with the same proportion. Okay. Um, so let's let's make a very basic concept of this. As you may see already, uh, it's probably easy to think about dividing four by four, four columns and four rows to make a 16, four by four makes 16, right? 16 grids within that uh, design. So let's work on this one. Um, mine is a three inch by three inch, okay? So what is the half of three inch? One and a half inch. One and a half inch? Half of that. Okay, so three and a half. Uh, no, no, three quarter of an inch, right? Okay, so that makes it um, dividing into four, right? So same thing, one and a half, three quarter of an inch on both sides. That makes this to be like that, right? And then same way. One and a half, three quarters. Right. And you could be naming these to be like, a, you know, A, B, C, D, column A, B, C, D, and the row one, two, three, four, for example, offshoot. Okay. So um, you can do any. You can do even smaller, but I think this is a good amount of grids uh, on thumbnail sketch. Of course, if your thumbnail sketch is different size, some people are using a two inch square, some people are using four inch square, depending on the size of your thumbnail sketch. Your measure bottom line is making those division of four uh, on each side. Okay, and then um, final stage of this, Assignment 1A is on Bristol, okay? Um, if you use uh, just a drawing paper, that's a little bit uh, too thin. It's good to do this pen and ink drawing onto the Bristol, okay? Now, uh, my Bristol is 14 by 17, okay? So um, let's draw four, uh, six by six inch square in the middle. Um, what is 14 minus 6? Divide by 2. So 4, 4, right? That makes the remainder to be 6 inch um, in the middle, right? So you can, if you have a T square, of course you can draw the vertical line by using the edge of the paper. Okay, and now this is a 17 inch. Now, what is 17 minus six? Seventeen minus six. Five by two. Five. Yeah, five and a half. Right? And five and a half from each side. Okay, right. Square, six by six inch square in the middle. Okay, I want you to place the square in the right middle of your paper. The reason I'm asking is I don't want you to still uh, determine which side is at the top, which side is bottom. I don't want you to make that uh, yet. I want you to make exactly in the center 
So we can think about orientation of image after being completed. Okay. Now um, let's work on the same amount of grid here. Here is six inch, six divided by two. Uh, one and a half. One and a half. One and a half. Okay. So that makes that. And I am using just a um, uh, number two pencil, the HP pencil, because I don't want you to draw something very dark this time. At the end, you are, after you finish with the ink, I want you to erase all these pencil marks. So draw, uh, draw line relatively lightly, not heavy. Okay. And now here is again three, right? And one and a half. All right, I hope you can see very light square I, I made with the same amount of grid, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So 16 squares within the six by six inch square. Okay, now let's make it easy by same numbering A, B, C, D, one, two, Three, four, okay. So grid transfer, I'm sure you have done, many of you have done this before. Um, you are uh, looking at design and shapes within each grid. And just draw bigger on the same grid on Bristol. So I'm looking, starting from A1 here, right? Um, I see a design, I see a shape like that and going to B1 and this black shape is going like that and this funny white shape is starting here to go to B1. Okay, and this shape goes to A2, and this another black shape comes from A3, This line goes to a a four like that, and this half moon kind of shape goes to C one to D one, and this gray shape is mostly in D one and black shape is in D1. And the shape goes like that from D1 to C1, as uh, D2 to C2, and shadow shape is from B1, uh, B2, C2, D2, and D1. And shape here, starting C2, B3, and B4, and A4. And this goes like that.
just uh, uh, using those grid line to help you guide it. So it's like this. So do you see that I was transferring this shape to this big shape with a pencil? Okay, in a six by six inch square on Bristol paper. All right. Um, so from this point on, um, uh, you can start to use micron, make something like this. Okay. So one thing I want to point out is a little bit of different styles. What's the big difference is, I know the design, the shapes are slightly different, but what other than shape is slightly different, what's the big difference stylistically between these two? This one, every single shape, I started with a clear solid outline, right? Every single shape, I, I have an outline, right? Even this one too. Right. And this one, if you see carefully, there is no outline other than black shape. Here, I didn't mark the, any, draw any actual outline. All these hatchings are all stopping at the border. Okay. So using this as implied outline. You probably watched my uh, lecture on line, implied line, okay? There is no real line there, but you see that uh, some, you imply there is an edge of the shape because all li uh, hatchings are all lined up, okay? So that's something you should consider. When you, you see this, and when you, after you draw with a pencil, you probably inclined to do that outline first, right? With a uh, Sharpie. But uh, just wait a little bit. I think sometimes you do not need those outline. Maybe you can start to fill with the texture and you may already create implied shapes. Okay, all right? So that's something you should consider, okay? This is a very interesting work with so many three-dimensionality three going on. Okay, three-dimensionality coming from all this direction of all these lines, and also dots, density of dots create some additional three-dimensionality too, okay? And this one is a good example about implied line, right? Here has la actual line, but other ones very much implied because all this outside of a shape is kind of leaving some white space to give a sense of shape, this white shape continue from this side to this side, okay? And I don't think this, these uh, um, organic patterns like water, it was originally in the subject. Uh, but an artist and a student actually thought about fitting in with this kind of um, uh, water puddle kind of sub uh, texture to this. Okay. And this is a nice work with with the actual line, okay, actual outline. But sometimes I feel like, ah, oh, do you really need to have those actual outline? Maybe you didn't have to. Maybe some areas you do need the actual line. Maybe some areas you don't, okay? And uh, you can make it more like a surrealistic like that, okay? You may start to imagine something else is going on rather than just it was originally a plant. And this is a very good example of uh, ambiguous, ambiguous um, quality, looks like Maybe plant, maybe it's flower, but uh, it's no longer clear, which is a very exciting stage. 
in an uh, audience viewers interpret differently. Okay. And of course, if you feel comfortable, yes, you can draw nice, nice flower. Okay, this is very good example of a flower arrangement. Even though some shapes are starting to look different, a good example of what is very intense texture of possibly broccoli here, and all this interesting texture. Once it's bigger, like six by six, you end up to be uh, feeling more intense texture than stage of thumbnail sketches. Thumbnail sketch was small. Uh, once it's bigger probably you end up to be making more uh, different shape uh, textures. Okay. And this one looks like almost like a cave uh, or like a cliff looking down to see a beach. Right. So it's, it's good to look something else, look like something else. Okay. And uh, uh, sometimes looks like a different size from original subject. I don't think this looks like bigger than original subject, and uh, I think that's actually a good stage. All right. And you can, yes, uh, draw with a white marker over black, but of course the white dot becomes slightly different from paper white. So if you are intending to leave some white dot, I'd rather leave that white dot and work on the outside of the white dot. Okay, so probably that's probably better uh, to create uh, more stark white shapes rather than working with a, uh, a white out. 